Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bible Baptist Church and our Sunday morning service. I uh, hope you all are having a wonderful day so far, and we're thankful that you're here with us. If you are a first-time guest with us, um, hopefully our ushers gave you a visitor's card on your way in, and we just ask that you would fill that out for us, just a brief information about who you are so we know who's with us this morning and drop in the offering plate on your way out this morning. We would appreciate that greatly. Um Hope everybody had a good time and stayed safe during the snow. Talked to the teens. Some of them went outside and Rylan hid in a trash can and was throwing snowballs at his dad and sounded like a good time. And, um, and, and, and um, but I hope you had a good time with family this weekend um, and stayed safe as well. Uh, if you have your hymnals, go ahead and turn with me to page 496, page 496. And then we'll sing right after that, we'll sing page 498 as well. We'll sing both of those before we uh, go down. But page 496 is the first one. And go ahead and stand with me as you, as, when you find it. And we'll sing Victory in Jesus. We'll sing all three verses. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is new him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. On the second, I heard about his healing of his cleansing power. Revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, and on the last, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is new. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And then if you could turn over with me to 498, and we'll just sing the first and the last of this song when we all get to heaven, page 498. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare 
prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. And on the last. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Great singing, everybody. You may be seated. Amen. That was good singing. Boy, we missed one week because of snow. And then we got worried we might have to miss a second week, but uh, thank the Lord it warmed up enough to melt all the snow away. Biggest problem we have when it snows several inches is the parking lot. If it'll clear up for us, uh, we, usually the roads will get clear after a day and uh, maybe two at the most. Some of the secondary roads may still be a little bad if they've got shade on them. But we're glad all of you are here. We thank you for coming. And those of you watching from home, we welcome you today. Hope you enjoyed the singing, and uh, we will uh, remember our prayer list. Tomorrow at 1 p.m., there'll be a funeral service here in the auditorium for Miss Frances Pegler, and uh, Fran and Earl were longtime members of the church. Frances' brother is Rob Nance, and Tommy Nance, who's head on our cancer list, and Linda Brooks, who's a member here also. This is their sister, and uh, she passed away at home, and uh, the funeral service at 1. Now, visitation will be from 11 a.m. to 1, and then the funeral at 1. So any part of that you would be interested in coming to to speak to the family. Also, our neighbor, Lois Covington, uh, was found dead at home yesterday. She was a widow. Her husband was Pete's first cousin. His name was Walter Covington. We called him Duck, big tall guy. He always had the duck to go in the door, I guess. You know, I don't know. And I've uh, uh, been friends with him so many years. My wife just said yesterday as we had to go out, she said, I need to stop and see Lois. We haven't seen her out in about a long time. And I said, be good, honey, but you probably need to try to call her first, let her know you're coming. And uh, then that afternoon we found out she had passed away. So, um Remember the Covington family. Uh, remember Tommy and Rita at home, and uh, Chris Holland is here today, and remember him and his parents. Chris's wife passed away just recently. Debbie, that was on our longtime prayer list for cancer, and his dad has cancer, and his mom has Parkinson's disease. So please remember this whole family, and remember Chris going through this. Sue Clark's home getting well. She had her pacemaker replaced. And she's uh, doing good, but, it, you know, it takes uh, pain for the incision and takes time to get over being in the hospital. And she's at home and doing well. Uh, Diane Hudler had a test, and it came out good. Uh, Patsy and Pete have some health issues. Pete has an enlarged aorta. Patsy has a continuous battle with what they call AFib, where her heart rate runs up. And so both of them are seeing doctors right now. Dee and Tina Templeton have some chronic health issues. Please remember to pray for them. Miss Darla Ash is in the hospital in Cleveland County over at Shelby area. <clears throat> she went to Kings Mountain and they transferred her. She has uh, an AFib issue, but she was dehydrated at home and just about unresponsive. And her daughter got her an ambulance and got her to the hospital at Kings Mountain and they transferred her. And, um, she has not snapped right back yet either. So remember her, please. Uh, Miss Faye has some more doctor tests, and she's hoping to get back to church. Uh, Paula Sprague and Tommy Nance, cancer. Long list of cancer folks in our bulletin prayer list, so please remember all of those folks to the Lord. Um, Daryl Lynn Ross and Roger Parrish and Gigi Nickel is homesick, so remember her. 
Now, if you gave money to this church last year, there are giving statements out on the table at the back. If you do a long form for your taxes, you can still claim all the money you give to a legitimate charity or church that's legitimate. You do not have to pay tax on that money. So it's a little bit of a help when you do your taxes if you do long form. Now, if you just file short form, it doesn't help you except with the Lord. I promise you when you give, the Lord will give it back to you. So uh, be faithful to give. Get your statements. Um, we're having a couple's banquet on February 12th. So we're going to have a sign-up sheet for that. It's $20 for a couple. We're ordering the food from um, Italian Olive Garden. I can't remember the name of it because I've never been there. I don't go there. But I can eat something of, that we're getting. They're going to have meatballs and, and uh, sausage, Italian sausage, and two kinds of pasta and a couple of times of sauces. And so you'll build your plate and uh, – and then you can order a dessert. Dessert comes with it for the price, $20 a couple. And the church is absorbing about $4 a couple on that to help you get it you know, to a flat number and maybe help you a little bit. So if you have questions, see Jacob. He lined this up, and he's recruited Bob to help him, I'm sure. Where is Bob? Children's Church today. He's staying with Jerry to help out. Okay. And... Um, he taught a new class today, and I believe they had nine in the class. That was great. Now, I met several visitors this morning. The Petersons, wave your hand at me right here if you would. They're from Fort Mill, and they're here visiting. We're glad to have them. And then this gentleman sitting right here is Jeff, and I met him early this morning. And then Ty and Claudia back here from all the way from Lancaster. And uh, thank you for coming today. That's a pretty good drive. And... Um, so these are first-time visitors, and we're delighted always to have them. Be sure you greet them and welcome. Now, there's an Indian family that came in just a few minutes late. Tell me your name. Ashok. Ashok. Okay, good to meet you, sir, and your family. Glad to have you here today. And, and wouldn't you know they come on a day when we got three other Indian families, and they're not here. <laughs> uh, Brother Samuel teaches school. I'm not sure where they are today, but... Uh, um, Himachandra and Satish. I'm not sure if he's made it back from India yet or not. Oh, they're quarantined. Okay, <laughs> with sickness. Well, um, anyway, we're glad to have you here and um, good to meet you. Um, thank you all for coming and thank you for watching at home. And Jacob will pray some point in time with the music. We'll go to the Lord in prayer, but before we do, just want to mention the Couples Banquet sign-up sheet is on our website, so if you would, just go to the Bible Baptist Church website and fill that out. You can pick a dessert for you and your wife as well, and, uh, and looking forward to a good time, and I hope you'll be able to make it. Let's pray. To the Lord, I just thank you for uh, this day and, and for the opportunity, Lord, to hear your word preached once again, Lord, and to be back in your house as we weren't able to gather uh, last week, Lord, but I do pray uh, for Chris and, and, and his family and, and, and the pain that he's going through right now with the loss of his wife, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, comfort him through your word, Lord, that you would just comfort him through your spirit and through this church, Lord, help us to be able to be an encouragement and be there for him when he needs us to be, Lord, but I just pray that uh, you would be with him. I pray that you would be uh, with with our church family, Lord, as we're, we're uh Gearing up, we're having a new members class, Lord. I just pray that uh, they would continue to thrive and get plugged in, Lord, that they would be able to make some lifetime friends here at Bible Baptist Church and, and just uh, be able to grow in the Lord in that way, Lord. I pray uh, for those that are out sick, whether it's COVID or just uh, the, the general sickness of this time of year, Lord, I just pray that as the great physician, Lord, that you would heal their bodies, Lord. I pray that you would uh, be with their families as well. I pray... Um, that you would uh, help us this morning to learn and grow close to you, to not just be heroes of the word, but doers also, Lord. Every single one of us, every day of our lives, there's room for us to grow, to be more like you, Lord. And I just pray that our cup would always be uh, open so that we, you can fill it up, Lord, and to teach us something that we did not learn before, Lord. Be with the message that pastor will bring this morning. Be with the music. Help it all to bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Jesus, the kind shepherd, from me. And now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Sore is my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day. My Savior will walk with me there, and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and I shall feast at the table spread for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. All the days, all the days of my life. Amen. Thank you very much. If you would, grab your hymnals one more time and turn with me to page 204. 204. We'll sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus, and we'll sing all three verses of 204 this morning. And when you find it, I ask if you're able, go ahead and stand with me as we sing. For a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of his glory and grace, on the second, through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. out on the last. 
His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all we will. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you. you may be seated. My wife reminded me that I skipped uh, Tweetsie Alexander, who was a sister also. She's the youngest of that family. They had somewhere around 11 or 12, I think, in the beginning, and uh, children. And um, several of them have been members of the church here, and we're, we're thankful for that. Turn in your Bible with, with me to John, the first chapter, the Gospel of John. Mark, you got an announcement. Yeah. Okay. John chapter 1 and verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now today I'm going to finish a message that I started that had seven points. And one of those ended up with about 20 sub points underneath it. So it's carried over for several weeks. It's vital that we understand the doctrines of the Word of God, that we believe them, and that we defend them. Jude said we must defend the faith. And those who are false teachers would change the Bible and have influence on people not knowing what to believe, but you can believe the Word of God. And so uh, I really didn't plan for this series to go that long. I didn't want to make a long series out of it, but I believe the Lord has led in it, and it's important to have sound doctrine. To believe right, we'll live right. And to live right, we must believe right. So it's important that we understand what the Bible teaches about all these things. There are warnings given to us. Look at 1 Timothy, if you would. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And we'll look at some of 2 Timothy also while we're here. There are warnings that remind us of how important it is that we know what the Bible teaches. The word doctrine simply means teaching. What does the Bible teach about Jesus Christ and the virgin birth? And that's what we're covering with the incarnation of Christ. <clears throat> and I will hopefully finish that today. In 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The warning of people turning away from sound teaching. Turn to 2 Timothy, if you would, in chapter 2 and verse 24. For us as Christians to grow in the faith and be serving the Lord... Chapter 2, verse 24 says, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, 
that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Scripture says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Spoiling means to take captive, the, the spoils of war. And there are men that want to take people captive. They want to rule over them. They want them to do the things they would have them to do. And that's, that's uh, a common problem in religious circles. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul gave a charge to young Timothy. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead in his appearing in kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears and shall be turned unto fables. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Pack your ministry full. And so it's important that we understand that there are enemies of the gospel. And quite often the way enemies of the gospel work, like Satan who transforms himself into an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of light. They appear to be people who would tell you the truth. You know, if you drink a cup of coffee and it's 95% coffee and 5% arsenic, it's going to kill you. And that's how Satan works. He doesn't try to get you to drink a cup of arsenic. He tries to get you a sweet-smelling, aroma-filled cup of coffee with just enough poison in it to either put you in a, a stupor that he can lead you to destruction or to kill you because he likes to devour uh, all the people that he possibly can. So it's important we understand the truth of the Bible, that we understand what the Bible teaches, and we're not led astray. Titus continues this same kind of warning in chapter 2. Paul wrote to young Titus, a minister at Crete, and he said, Speak the things that become sound doctrine. And then he taught about how the aged men should learn, how the aged women should learn, how the young men and the young women should learn. And they're learning the things of the Bible so that they will not be led astray. In the book of Acts, Paul reminded the Ephesian elders <coughs> to feed the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made them overseers. A pastor is an overseer. And that word overseer can be translated bishop. The word pastor comes from the expression to feed. He is an under-shepherd who has a responsibility to feed the flock that belongs to God. You're a church. You're a flock. You don't belong to me. This is not my church. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you belong to Him. And He loved you and gave His life for you that you could have everlasting life. And he's given me a calling and a responsibility laid upon my shoulders to be faithful to preach the Word of God, regardless what people want to hear. <clears throat> and part of the warning that Paul gave is that people will lend themselves to getting what they want by listening to teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. Not what God says, but what they interpret God saying to people so they can draw the flock to them and build their attendances in their ministries or whatever it may be. So I began this doctrinal study um, as a seasonal teaching on Christ and the Incarnation. The Incarnation means that Christ took on flesh. As we read in our text verse of John 1 and verse number 14, Christ took on flesh first of all to reveal God to man. God came to man. That was the prophecy that Isaiah gave about 750 years before the birth of Christ that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and his name would be called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel being interpreted means God with us. And God came to us through the virgin birth. 
That's why it is so important that we understand that doctrinal teaching of the virgin birth and that we do not stray from it. Christ did not have a human father like all of us. We are all descendants of Adam. And because we are descendants of Adam, we have a sinful nature as Adam sinned and that nature passed on to all his descendants. And sadly, along with that nature came the judgment of death. And death comes because all men sin. And we are descendants of Adam and death will come for us. But Christ took on flesh through the virgin birth that he might bring God to man and that he might go and die for us to deliver us from the penalty of our sins. Secondly, he came to be the one perfect sinless man who could make the sacrifice that was acceptable to God. We are sinners, and so our sin hinders us from being in a relationship to see God and hold his hand and talk to God. We're going to have to shed this flesh one day and get a new body to be able to go to heaven and do that. But Christ could do that. He could offer himself and God would accept his sacrifice because he was sinless and perfect and did not have the sin nature of Adam passed down upon him because he is the Son of God. It was man that was under judgment for death, not God. He didn't die as God. He died as man. As man, he was the perfect God-man who took on flesh to fill that role as the perfect sacrifice for your sins and for mine. Thirdly, he became the merciful and faithful high priest who ever lives to make intercession for us. If you want to look there in Hebrews 2 and verse 14, I love the way Hebrews um, explains things about Christ and, and gives him glory and exaltation and there's written to understand the person of Christ in chapter 2 and verse number 14 scripture says for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Christ knows what you're going through. He went through all the things that we do, except he did it without sin. And he, therefore, could be the perfect sacrifice. And as a high priest, he offered the sacrifice to God of himself. He died on the cross and shed his blood that it would pay for our sin debt because of our sins. I will never forget that God revealed to me in the scriptures, in preaching and teaching of other people, that I was the reason that Christ died. It was my sins. And he willingly took them on himself and died to pay the sin debt that I had incurred. We're unworthy of his grace but he would have us to have it. It is given to us as a gift. We do not earn it. We do not deserve it. But the gift is given. If we will just receive Christ, we receive the benefits of what he has done for us in his death on the cross. He took on flesh to destroy the works of the devil. We read there in that passage to be the merciful and faithful high priest. Now we still have a battle with the devil as long as we live in the flesh. Therefore, we are told to put on the whole armor of God to stand against the wiles of the devil. And God has delivered us from his kingdom and broken the bondage that sins had over us. And he's going to deliver us one day from the presence of sin when he takes us to heaven to be with him forevermore. 
The fifth point of the incarnation was that Christ took on flesh to be the head of the new creation. In Romans chapter 8, and verse 28 and 29, the Scripture made it clear that everything is working together for good to those who love God. You say, but I'm going through a tough time. God will use that tough time for other people. The same grace He gives to you to go through that tough time, 2 Corinthians 1 says, you are to turn around and use that same grace to help someone else who's going through that difficulty and trial that you're going through. And then verse 29 says, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. So all the things that are happening to us in this life, God will use to shape us and mold us and make us and draw us close to Him in prayer that we might become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. God's predetermined plan will for every believer is to become like Christ. And so as we live for Him and serve Him, we get changed day by day, experience by experience, and um, through all the circumstances that we go through. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. We All old things are passed away, and now we have a new walk with God and a citizenship in heaven because of that. Jesus is the head of the body, and He's to have preeminence in all things. He's Lord, and we're to submit to His will be done because He paid the price for us all. And we saw many things were accomplished for us because Christ took on flesh, was crucified, buried, and rose again from the dead. I mentioned uh, 13 of them in the, the context, and I remind your pure minds quickly of these 13 points. Number one, redemption for sinful man was accomplished. Romans 3.24, Christ paid the price for our redemption. Secondly, reconciliation is made possible in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20 and 21, that we are reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Therefore, we are justified or made righteous in Him in Romans 5.1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For we are cleansed of our sins, and they are forever removed from us, never to be recalled against us again. In Colossians 2 and verse 13, the Scripture says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together meaning made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Thank God for what He has done for us in providing salvation. Number five, He's made us a part of His family simply by believing on His name. John 1, 11 and 12, He came unto His own, the Jewish nation, <clears throat> but His own received Him not. But to as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Six, He made acceptable to God all of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In Colossians 1 and verse 20 through 22, the Scripture says, Having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, you that were sometime enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled, yet in the body of His flesh through death, to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in His sight. God will present His people holy, unblameable, unreprovable, cleansed of all their sin to the Father, as the church of Jesus Christ, we are made acceptable. Number seven, we've been sanctified, which means to be set apart, holy unto God. We're no longer our own. We've been bought with the price of the blood of Christ. 
And so we should serve Him and live for Him and walk in newness of life. Number eight, we've been translated out of Satan's kingdom. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 said, If our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of men, lest they see the glorious light of the gospel of Christ and be saved. So Satan keeps people blinded to truth, but Christ hath paid the price to save us, and when we believe on Him, He has translated us out of that realm that Satan is over as the unholy God of this world and has placed us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We are a work in progress. God has placed us on the foundation of Christ and we are being built up a spiritual house that we might uh, honor Him and please Him with what we do. Number 10, we are the children. So we are the objects of His love and care and protection and provision both now and in the future. The paternity is there. Jesus made it clear when He taught His disciples how to pray. We're to pray, Our Father which art in heaven. If you're saved today, God is your Father. And you can call upon Him as your Father. And you should every day thank Him as your Father for all His provision and all His blessings and all His protection and goodness to you. I heard uh, Sister Blodgett say this morning, same thing several times and even told some other preachers on the internet that um, I'm so thankful we didn't lose power through these storms that have come because the temperature was going to get down in the 20s and to lose power it could be serious for a whole lot of people. If you lose it long enough, your water pipes could freeze and break and, and all kinds of trouble could happen. If it happens in the middle of the night, you're not sure what to do. You know, it's dark and you realize it's got cold in the house and the power's off and, and it's, it's just a, an eerie situation to be without power. And so I'm so thankful that God protected us in that way. Our Heavenly Father answered our prayers and God has granted us access to Him. Romans 5, 2, because we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ, we have access to God. Number 11, we're kept by the power of God unto the completion of our salvation with an inheritance waiting for us there. As the inheritance, we are uh, co-inheritors with the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, verse 12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. We're part of the body of Christ. We will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb that Revelation speaks of. That's 13 points. There are more but that's a little bit of all that we receive and we have today simply by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ who did the work for us with God. The sixth point of the seven of the aspect of the incarnation is that Christ came to be king. First, in Matthew, He came to be the king of the Jews. We had a celebration on the 19th of December. Our children put on a drama for us. We had a lot of special music that uh, Jacob directed and, and planned. And um, numerous portions of our choir and folks sang and, and uh, did special songs. And it was a real blessing. And the kids came down with their costumes on. Grace and Tim brought the set. We had a great big uh, stable up here and and some of the kids dressed as donkeys and, and uh, uh, camels and, and as people and the kings. And we know those two events didn't happen at the same time. The shepherds were at the birth of Christ in the stable. They went to see him after he had been born a babe in the manger. But the kings who came, or the wise men as they are called, who came, they came to worship the king of the Jews. And the word Messiah, the Christ, was the qualification for him to be the king along with the fact that he was a direct descendant of David 
formerly the king of Israel, that all Israel loved. So he came to rule as king of the Jews. But secondly, turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation 19. Our blessed Savior one day will come back to this earth and rule and reign here in his kingdom on earth for a thousand years. And he'll reign over all the kingdoms of men. Revelation 19 and verse 11 I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And on his vesture thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Our blessed Savior one day will have his rightful place to rule and reign over his people, and he will bring a conquering upon those who have violated all of his truth and a deliverance to all those who have believed upon him. Today we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking for that time where he'll take us to heaven so that he delivers us from this hour of temptation that will come upon all the world we call the tribulation period. And it's at the end of the tribulation in Revelation 19 when he returns to the earth, fights the battle of Armageddon, sets up his kingdom, and all who are his believers will rule and reign with him in his kingdom. Seventh, final one. I know you're looking forward to that one. The points of doctrine of the incarnation of Christ that he took on flesh is that he had to become our kinsman redeemer that he could die in our place and deliver us rightfully before God. God made us. We belong to him. He created us. And Christ purchased us back from where we sold ourselves into sin. It was found in the book of Ruth as a type of everything that Jesus would do. I won't turn there for the time, but it's found in Leviticus 25, starting with verse 47, there is the law of redemption of land and dwellings and how people can be redeemed when they have gone into a calamity of bankruptcy within Israel. For they were never to sell their land. They could lease it, so to speak, until the Jubilee every 50th year, all lands and all people were to return back to their homes and to their freedom. Galatians chapter 6, 4 through 7, tells us that the Redeemer had to be related. He had to be a kinsman. The word Redeemer in Hebrew is Goel. The Goel is Christ. He's the Redeemer. But a Goel is also an avenger who would go after those who harmed his family, and he would bring justice. Christ will bring justice on this world. Galatians 4, verse 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, the Son placing in the family of God. Because your sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So the Redeemer had to be related. In the story of the book of Ruth in chapter 4, Boaz was the one who was related to Naomi and her husband Elimelech. And he owned a field. And the Bible says that Ruth went out to glean in the field. A widow in Israel could go behind the harvesters and pick up the leftover pieces 
to beat out some seed to make flour or whatever. And so her right was to do that. The Bible says it was her hap to go into the field that belonged to Boaz. It was her happenstance. No, it was God's way, God's providence, just like your salvation that he has brought to you and to me. Boaz was related. Boaz saw the virtue of Ruth and he sought to redeem her and the land that belonged to her dead husband and her mother-in-law Naomi and the land that belonged to her dead husband. That he would marry Ruth and bring up children and he would purchase this from Ruth that she might be taken care of, and so would uh, Naomi. The Redeemer had to be kinsman, related to them. Christ, related to us in the flesh, took our place. Secondly, the Redeemer had to be able to redeem. Boaz was able, but there was another kinsman that was closer than him. He went to him and asked him to redeem Elimelech's land. He said, I will do that. He said, but when you do that, you must also redeem the land of Ruth. And he said, wait a minute, I can't do that. I'll, I'll mar my own inheritance. And so the custom was that he would take off his shoe and give it to the Redeemer. And that was the symbol for all to see that he, this was a contract, something that had been decided. And so Boaz took his shoe and Boaz became the Redeemer to purchase them out of their calamity. And he would take Ruth to be his wife and raise up a name in the name of the dead husband so that his inheritance of land would continue in that family. Thirdly, the Redeemer had to be willing to redeem. This closer relative was unwilling, but Boaz was willing. And he purchased the price and he married Ruth and the Bible says in Ruth 4, verse 17, that uh, Ruth had a child, and Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. Obed. Obed means worshiper. He is the father of Jesse the father of David. Now these are the generations. Jesus beget Hezron, Hezron beget Ram, Ram beget Amenadab, Amenadab beget Nashon, Nashon beget Salmon, Salmon beget Boaz, Boaz beget Obed, Obed beget Jesse, and Jesse beget David. God working his plan to bring about the family where Christ would be born. And he allowed a Gentile bride. Most of the church are Gentiles. The Jewish population is very small in the church compared to all who are not Jewish. And this is a Gentile bride that's been received because of Christ and his relationship to God. He receives us with favor. The importance of the incarnation. Don't ever let the teaching of the incarnation or the virgin birth slip around you. Stand for truth, what the Bible teaches. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for them listening. Bless those that are watching, we pray. And we ask now that you'll use this time of an invitation for Jesus' sake. Amen. Play through a verse or something or sing a verse. And if you need someone to counsel with you or pray with you, if you'll come, we'll help you. It's 246 in your hymnals. And as we sing, go ahead and stand with me. And if the Lord's working on your heart, the altar is open. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me, 
See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Soup, you hear guys first and enjoy it, guys, on the weekend. And uh, she called the cancel coming. We're going to have a CPR class Saturday with cancel because of the weather. So we put it on for this coming weekend. We're going to get more snow and ice. Um, it'll be Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Those 10 people that signed up for the CPR class are going to be taking me. So if you can make that change in your schedule, we've already made a change with the nurse who's coming to do this. Uh, Jacob, any announcements you got in business? Uh, just choir practice tonight for all of my choir members. Choir practice will be at 4.30. And, um, and thank you for, for all your hard work. And then also, I forgot to mention for a couple's banquet, if you are saying, I can't come because I have children or whatever the case may be, uh, we are going to have a nursery uh, for those that have children. So that way your kids will be taken care of while you can enjoy a nice uh, dinner uh, with, your, with your loved one. And so just keep that in mind as well. Let's pray. The Lord, uh, we thank you that you came to earth, Lord, and that you took on flesh for us, Lord, uh, who didn't deserve it. The Bible says, for God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Lord. And I'm so thankful that you loved me even though I didn't deserve it, even though I'm not perfect, Lord. You loved me and gave yourself for me. And I pray, Lord, uh, that we would... Uh, give our lives as as a sacrifice for you, a living sacrifice for you, Lord, for it's the least we can do since you gave your life for us, Lord, to help us to give our lives for you and each and every day of our lives, help us to grow closer to you, help us to grow more like you and in turn, help us to reach others and, and point them to you before it's everlastingly too late. Lord, I just pray uh, for our church family. I pray that they would continue to, this new year to walk with you and to obey every impulse of your spirit. And uh, be, bring us back tonight. Bring us back safely. Watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.